All right, guys. So for today's fun and games, I decided to do a bit of an experiment. Now, it's not going to be easy to show you guys, but I'll do the best I can. What we've got here is two bowls that I cannot make identical. And I can't make them identical due to course shift. Course shift is problematic at best with these. Uh, now, on this one, all right, this is this is our number one. This is the one I did uh, a lot of work to to simulate DV's head chunk, and then from there we start to move on to other ones. Well, this wall here. Let me see if I can say this right. This distance from our guide to the center of the cylinder wall is 50 thousandths less than this number here. Because of the way the casting was made, I had to put more, more of the port. In order to get the bowl the same width, right, it's going to change our port bias. Well, that's going to give us, that's going to do a couple things to it, right? One thing it's going to do is it's totally going to mess with our swirl because now you've got a lot more air coming out on this side than this side, okay? So that's going to give us less swirl most likely, I would think, right? And if we take a look at our liquid, now you have to realize I'm spraying aerosol into it. I may not have sprayed the exact same amount into both of these ports, but we can we can deduce a few things. One thing is it goes right right to the roof, which is good. Okay? We go right to the roof. We got plenty on the guide. We've even got some on this side of the guide. As far as width, this is not as wide as this one. This one is wider. It also goes right to the roof. And it has a little bit on this side of the guide. You can see our, our splatter on the bowl, on the bowl, on the chamber, which to me looks good. Over here, a little bit heavier splatter. Let's take a quick look at the, the, the bore. Now, I wasn't able to keep the bore so both of you guys can see. So you're only going to see the one from uh, from number three. Let's take a look at that. Okay, you can see we've got our angle coming in this way. And we've got plenty of chunky splatter on our board. Okay. Okay, now... In theory, I would think the one on the right is going to move more fuel over to the center because the bowl, I should say the roof, the roof is moved over more. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but 50 thousandths, you probably won't be able to see. Okay. In any case, what does it do as far as our our flows? It, I know it's going to mess with our swirl. There's no question about it. But as far as what we've got here, I'm pretty sure I could live with it. And I don't have to push these bowls dangerously thin to get done what we need to do. Right now, they're still nice and fat and healthy the way I like them. Let's take a look at the flow sheet. 
Okay, so what do we got? These pluses and minuses are in reference to this one. Now this is cylinder number one. This is number three. So this has got more bias towards the center of the cylinder. This has got more bias to the outside of the cylinder. So let's take a look at the flows first. Plus, 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 ex except when we get to the very top where we lose a little bit. Overall, this is a better curve. Now, if we take a look at our swirl curve here, this has got a really good swirl curve. This, due to more air entering on the center, the swirl changes direction. Most of the meat of the curve, the swirl is literally going the wrong way. And then as soon as you loses it over the short side, it bangs the other way hard. But even these numbers are less than these numbers, right? Because of the way the, the air is coming out of the bowl. Now, we have to start thinking, is that going to make a big difference the way these two produce power? It's a good question for the comments. I'll tell you my take on it. This one flows a little bit better, but doesn't have as good a swirl curve. This one flows a little bit less, has a better swirl curve. I think they're going to cancel each other out. I think they're going to make almost the exact same amount of power. Let me know what you think about that. Let's take a look at the air speeds in the ports because they're quite different, right? Okay, that is number one. Let's take a look at our pinch. You wouldn't think it would affect the pinch much, right? 259, 260, 280, 263, down a little bit. 295, 275. The pinch is actually a little bit slower on this head. Now, the pinch is about the same size, within a few thousands. Okay, so if they're moving about the same air, that's at 600 lift. So we got 218 versus 216. Okay, this is moving a touch less air. Gotcha. All right, take a look at the roof speeds. 251, 230. Wow. Remember, this has got a lot more area now on the center of the cylinder. So what does that do to our air speeds? Now, as far as being apart from each other, you've got 36. Here you've got 21. This is a bigger discrepancy. But it still flows more. Well, actually, at 600, it's flowing a little bit less, right? Okay, that makes sense. Now, let's take a look at our short side. 384, 406, 267, it looks like. 267. You know, I didn't put the pluses and minuses in, but... Went down, went down went down. So our entire short side is really got better speeds than we had before. They're quite they're quite even. I mean 360, 357, very even. Because well, I think because we because the bowl is shifted over, it's actually easier to get air out from around the bowl, from around the periphery of the valve, from the center. Because if you take a look at how the cylinder is designed, right, from here to here we're shrouded, right? This is all wide open. So the more we can get out on this side, the better off you're able to do it. Now the problem with this is this wall is adjacent to this wall and there's water between it. 
And if you make this wall too thin, there's a cracking issue, right? So we don't want to do that. But in a case where you have core shift, okay, there was plenty of metal on this side. There wasn't that much metal on this side. So, yeah, you can push it thin on this side, but still, you don't want to push it past a certain limit. So when you give it more area on this side, we're able to, to, to dump more out into this open area. Okay? As far as our liquid flow on our valve, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Now, you got to remember, that's from this one. And... Uh, You're going to say, hey, Charlie, how come those flows are quite a bit less than the DV chunk? I think I explained this before. I'm going to explain it again. The DV chunk, the air speeds through the intake port were a little too slow. So I'm trying to get it done with a smaller port now. Well, I will do uh, my full makeup on these. I have to go through and do the whole IOP program on these ports versus the DV head chunk after I've worked on it and uh, see which ones really fit the bill. As far as uh, getting our horsepower requirements through the tiny dual plane, these are only down a few CFM. And I mean few, I mean like 10 or 12 versus the port that flows 20 plus more. That's interesting to think about. That's not what I would have expected. Okay, but still, you know, the restriction is the restriction. You can't get past your ma major point of restriction that easily. So... In reality, when we have it strangled with the two barrel and that dual plane, these may may make they will they will make better torque in the mid range, but they may top out almost the same as the bigger port did. You guys can uh, hit me up in the comments if you disagree with that. It's kind of like. Uh, guys putting, you know, uh, an intake port on a Chevy that flows nearly 300 CFM and then couple it with a Performer RPM. The Performer RPM is only going to flow with 220 stock. It's, oh, it runs great. It doesn't run anything near what it should run. Okay? Interesting point, right, guys? All right. I think it's time to eat. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Have a good night.